Satoshi, on their usual release cycle, has a new power adapter out. This time we're looking at the 145 watt travel charger, which comes with some travel adapters. We get a not replaceable plug, we get a NA not applicable plug, a Euro plug, a crooked plug, and a big plug. Those are the technical terms. As usual, this Satoshi adapter will be put through the testing paces and its features and functions will be displayed. The longevity and thermal performance will be explored as well as some exploration as to why this might not be the best international traveler. The charger or power adapter, same thing, will be compared to near competition as well. I will be comparing to a bunch of other random wattage chargers. I don't think I have any exactly 145 watt matches. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to spill the beans early in this one and break the promise to only make positive reviews from now on. Yeah, this thing is not good. There are several reasons why I'd not choose this, and I will go through them in the video. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? Always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared. If you want more information, see the links in the description. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon if you are interested. This is video upload number 200. That's a lot of videos. I need to start making money at this or give up. I can see why people don't review these products without a sponsor or free item. I buy all of these. Should that be a point of pride that I lose money on every video or should I start rolling in advertiser friendly content? Onto the show. Today, I have the Satoshi 145 watt USB-C travel charger with model ST-W145GTH. The packaging is mostly cardboard, so that's not bad. The charger is plastic wrapped, but all the adapters are just in cardboard. To the recycling center you go. This adapter has four USB-C ports, so those of you that can't stand the sight of a USB-A port, you probably still won't like this one. There are several reasons for that. We'll get to that when we talk about the modes of operation and power sharing. The user manual has some claims of modes of operation, but basically the limits of wattage are presented, not the actual voltage levels or the type of mode being used. It's okay in terms of figuring out what port does what, but it doesn't really give you much information. It lacks a lot of the general information included in other user manuals. I give this a solid meh. Remember, it's made for Apple users. Man, I'm really focusing too much on that user manual. So this adapter, like others I've seen from Apple mostly, lacks a 12 volt mode and also lacks any programmable power supply modes. So this is a somewhat limited device. They really double down on this is for Apple users. I'm a partial Apple user. I do just fine with these, but I specifically don't use PPS for anything. The lack of modes is a disappointment though on a brand new product for 2024. It starts to tell the story of what this adapter really is and how it could be more but the idea to reduce the capabilities heavily limits its marketability. Do you use a MacBook? Comment below. The power adapter has removable plugs. These are unique. It is a well designed and shrouded power adapter system. The plugs have deep wells so you can't stick your fingers in the adapters if you plug one in and don't have the adapter attached. Although they aren't locked out with the minimal effort you should be able to shove a paperclip in or something. Risk mitigation. It's good enough. The included plug styles cover a decent area. It's really a United Kingdom, Eurotrip, Australia, or New Zealand type of travel device. You don't see much for the rest of the world. These plugs are proprietary, so you lose it, you have to buy new ones. And they won't be available locally. I don't know, I'm still on the, I use a desktop adapter and a travel adapter or a removable corded device and bring the correct cord train. I didn't check to see if they sell additional country plugs for this. When flipping the adapter around, you see a lot of text and different marks on the product. For one, we see a six in a circle. This is indicative of compliance with the Department of Energy requirements. In this case, the power adapter had an idle power usage of 0.19 watts and an average DOE efficiency of 89%. This exceeds the requirements, but who cares? Efficiency and idle power usage. These numbers are tiny and insignificant on my electric bill. Well, it's more of a big picture problem than a small picture problem, so bigger than you. Well, in this case, maybe not so bigger than you. The efficiency is poor. The issue is there are easily a billion or more devices plugged in in just the USA. So a billion times 0.2 versus a billion times 0.1 for idle power matters. For efficiency, a billion times the loss of 89% versus a billion times the loss of 91% efficiency is huge. So it's small and significant, I mean really meaningless on a one person case, but times the planet's population, this one is low. That's got to mean something for the thermals. 
Oh yeah, we've seen it before. You know what's coming, don't you? And although the idle power consumption is much better than Satoshi has done previously, the efficiency, again, is very poor. How did they go from the class leader in the 165 watt adapter to this? This product has a safety listing on the back as well. This is listed under Underwriters Laboratory with two countries, the United States and Canada. There are other marks, but these are more confusing to figure out what they actually indicate for a product. Achieving a safety mark with the interchangeable plugs is good. It basically means the power adapter passes some basic testing criteria related to isolation, fire safety, and dangerous conditions. It doesn't mean it will last longer or is better at being a power supply though. The renegotiation of USB ports is interesting. The first port and third port are linked, and the second port and fourth port are linked. So, if you try to use port 1 and 2, you won't get the maximum power out of the device. On every plug and unplug, the device renegotiates. That's normal. The time was not terrible for this to occur. The issue I ran into is that once you start to drop power, it cuts out again, and renegotiates again while power is being consumed. I don't like this, figuring out what it's doing after it started doing the charging process. So onto the part where we talk about electrical isolation. This product is well isolated, but it has a lot of leakage coupling between the mains and the output. For something advertised as a travel adapter, I really expect low leakage current. With the hit on efficiency, I'd expect the leakage current to be near zero, but no, this is a Tingle Master adapter. It's going to leave your fingers tingling when you type on your metal bodied MacBook when you are operating this from 240 volt mains AC. So what is leakage? It's basically the AC power that sneaks through the power adapter. There is always a voltage that gets through the power adapter, travels through your body when you are touching the plug in thing and then back through ground to the power system. This is a very high impedance path, but depending on how good your connection to ground is, it can leave you with the tingling sensation. In the case of poorly designed products, minor shocks. The data I could find for dry skin and perceptible current is one milliamp. Depending on the wetness of skin, this can be much lower. I think this needs to be updated desperately because I can detect 250 microamps pretty easily. I understand that it may not be a safety issue at 250 microamps, but it is annoying. The measured leakage current of the Satoshi 145 watt adapter was just over the line at 260 microamps on 270 volts RMS, which is borderline. This means on higher voltages in the world, you will be feeling the buzz. It's in line with other offerings from this company as well. It's fine on 120 volts, which is probably why I never had any problem, but bad above that. Don't try this at home. The Satoshi 145 watt power adapter is a solid middleweight adapter. It's heavier than something like the Rokerin 140 watt adapter or the Anchor 150 watt adapter, but at least it's also a lot bigger. Wait, I mean, why does this exist? It's bigger and heavier than similar power leveled competition. You can argue if the extra 100 grams of weight will make the difference. Since an adapter would be required for any of these, I don't consider that extra weight or space, since it's equal in all cases. This is not really a win. I'm way too strict though. It's fine, it will work. It's not a lead brick and it's not the size of a desktop computer. Next, I took a look at the thermal performance of this charger. It is always the part that gets me worried that something is going to blow up because these get hot. Let's face it, if you want it smaller, that means they get hotter. In this case, after half an hour, things look toasty. We're hitting 7 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. After an hour, oh yeah, it didn't make it that long. So after 45 minutes, this thing shut down on thermal overload. The temperature made it up to around 80 degrees C. Yeah, that's 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Too much at the hottest point. I did stand this adapter up to give it the most exposed surface for maximum cooling effect, and it didn't help. This is hot hot enough that it shut itself down. This is a direct result of the lower efficiency. It is good that it shut down and it did recover at least. It has to put that lost power somewhere and it turns into heat. Another reason every percent of efficiency matters. In my last video, I spent some time talking about capacitors and how heat is the enemy of longevity with this particular component. The failure is often because of one component, the capacitor. It's always the capacitor, in this case, an electrolytic capacitor. Often located in one part of the power supply, the auxiliary supply, which powers the circuit that powers the power adapter. As already shown, the external temperatures get hot. This worries me that with heavy use, this power adapter will not last a long time. I'm sure Satoshi has done the mean time before failure analysis though on every component in this thing, so it has to be good enough. But if your stuff breaks early or just out of warranty, there may be a plan in place.
Time to buy a new one. Okay, time to compare some comparison numbers again. And looking at the idle power data from this thing in comparison with others of higher wattage variety, this thing does good. For 145 watt, it's not bad. Is it the best? No. But is it within a reasonable range of idle power usage on either 230 or 120 volts for a charger of this type? Yes. The response time was very slow. So if you plug it into 230 then swap it to 120 volt quickly, you will see the power consumption be zero for quite a while. During this time, the voltage inside is slowly falling, meaning that it has a decent amount of storage inside. The response to light loads was not bad either. It didn't try to run away until a higher voltage PD mode was engaged, but at that point, it's ready to deliver power. In terms of average performance, this adapter's average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency, this power adapter is lower than others. This is plotted versus power quality, which is just too much for one video. The efficiency is not where it should be for a modern power adapter compared with even its own company's competition. I'd like to see them do better here. Even on 230 volt power, it didn't improve enough. So in this case, you get some travel adapters included with the device. You get a mediocre power adapter. The price on this thing is too much for what you are getting, meaning the value is not in this one. The adapters can be had for a few dollars, even ones with proper shutters, maybe even a safety listing. So here again, I don't see the value in this adapter. It is convenient to have it all in one package. Is that good enough to travel with it and use it once in a while? Absolutely. But is the convenience worth the cost? Okay, so overall, this Ateshi charger is a lot of things. It is an international traveler, but in my opinion, it is not the one that's going with me on a trip. Is it going to work? Yes. As a travel adapter, will it last a long time? Yeah. If it's not your daily driver, this thing is going to last a very long time, especially if you aren't using it at higher wattages. The trouble I find with this adapter is that it's also not a good travel adapter. The leakage is higher on higher voltages, and it's above a comfortable threshold for me. Again, this is my opinion, as I actually couldn't find good literature to support this. Also, the adapter overheated in less than an hour. I'm setting the bar high, but others can run for an hour at full load and not shut down, so why can't this one? The lower efficiency directly correlates to the temperature being higher. Am I being too strict here? Or am I nitpicking because I've seen better things? I'm not sure if I'm just being mean here, so will it work? Yes. Is it a top tier performer? No. 89% efficiency is good. Really, that's great. But in a small box with no cooling, I think it's too low. So let me know what you think. Should the government raise the bar to 90%? Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.